He said, you are a great monk. You know, and I think a six-year-old boy can understand that. Then Bodhidharma said, your, your Highness, a six-year-old boy can understand, but a 70-year-old man like you also cannot practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So, so the teachings are, are simple, right? That's why I said there's simplicity in the Buddha's teaching. And, uh, and what is interesting is also that they are actually very consistent. Now, consistency is a very interesting point. Ambalatika Rahulovada Sutta is a very long name. <laughs> Ambalatika means mang, mang, uh, mango stone. I don't know why it's called mango stone. <laughs> right, mango stone. The discourse given by the Buddha to Rahula in mango stone. Now this discourse is very interesting because you have a parallel in the Chinese uh, Chinese agamas. You know, we study these suttas. We, 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 they are supposed to be the Pali suttas from the Theravada, right? The Theravada tradition. You know, there are many, many other schools of thought, and in the <coughs> in the early period, there. Are, as many like 18 schools people thought but one of the school which which no longer exists to, to today but the but the but their thoughts are still very much uh, there is a savastivada school the word savastivada means the all sabha you know from the pali word just not sabha sabha savastivada so that school is the, the the all so in that in that school there's also this discourse called ambalatika rahulovada sutta and um, this Theravada monk uh, by the name of Analayo is a German monk, right? Uh, and he has translated it uh, from Chinese into English. And there's a Chinese, there's an English version now. So uh, if you, you read that, that, that discourse, you find a lot of similarities, a lot of parallels. The contents are almost identical. So, which, which tells you that actually the, the Buddha's teachings, you, you go back to the sutras, they are actually very, they're almost the same. It's just that when people add on other things, then when culturally it becomes different. That's why I remember our late chief always said, you know, the Dharma will always be the same, but Buddhism must change. Buddhism will be very different. Right? That's why you have Chinese Buddhism, you have Thai Buddhism, you have Sri Lanka Buddhism, you have Tibetan Buddhism. They all look different. Even the Buddha images look different. This is what Thai, this is Burmese, is it? Is it? So the Buddha image all look different. But you go into the teachings itself, they're very similar. You know? right? Like many of you, I've, I grew up studying in the Theravada tradition, which is a wonderful tradition because that's where the Pali tradition is. But later when I studied, in, when I tried to study in the Tibetan tradition, like in the Lamrim, and many of the teachings actually corroborates, explains even greater detail what is found in the Theravada traditions. It kind of given further explanations. So it kind of makes you understand even better. So there's that consistency in the, in the Buddha's teaching. So today we look at Ambalatika Rahulovada Sutta. This is Sutta 61. So you have a copy of the notes? Okay. <clears throat> so who was Rahula? Rahula was the Buddha's only son. Born on the day his father left the world to seek awakening. When the Buddha first re returned to Kapilavatu after his awakening, Rahula approached him and asked for his inheritance. You know the story, right? right? So, so the, the mother, Yashodara, saw the Buddha and his entourage monks coming. He said, that is your father. <laughs> he said, oh, really? He said, go. Seek an inheritance from him. So when Rahula met the, met the, the Buddha, the Buddha must be thinking, what shall I give him as an inheritance? Shall I give him the kingdom? What shall I give him? He said, what did the Buddha say? Sariputta, ordain him. <laughs> you know, so the story says that after that, the, the grandfather, isn't it? Is it the grandfather? The, the grandfather, right? the king Sudodana, was upset. My gosh, first my son become, now my grandson also become. <laughs> So I think after that they said, oh, if a child, I mean, before a certain age, before you can be ordained, you've got to get the permission from your, your parents. Right? Okay. Now this sutta is also mentioned in the 
Babru rock addict of Ashoka. You know this King Ashoka, right? This is like 250 BC, you know. Uh, as among those that all monastic and ladies should all listen to and reflect upon. It is a good example of using an object lesson in teaching Dharma to the young. So, on the Asoka rock edicts, so this, this sutta is, uh, is carved there, so it is said. Right? So, so we, we, we know that there was this, this sutta actually exists. Right? And I just mentioned to you, uh, Bhikkhu Analayo has also translated the Chinese version, uh, which is from the Agamas into English. Right? So you can read the English version and compare. Now, Rahula, there are many suttas. Right? All right? So today we are only looking at this. We have, well, it's not mentioned. So besides that, you have Datu, Rahula, Sutta. Datu, you know the meaning of Datu? Elements. Elements. The elements. Right? And then Maha Rahulo Vada Sutta, the great discourse to Rahula. Anusayas. You know what's Anusayas? Anusayas like tendencies, right? So many more. Apagata, Kalyana Mitas, so as a friend, and Chula. So you got Maha, you must have Chula. La. Maha means big, Chula means small. <laughs> chula. Huh? Like when we were in universities, we were what, Maha Siswa, isn't it? Uh, Maha Siswa, big student. Huh? But I never hear of Chula Siswa. <laughs> so before you enter university, we are all Chula Siswa. Right? Small, right? So Maha. So you see, the Malay word, Malay language, actually comes from Sanskrit. No? Right? It comes from Sanskrit. All right. So just give you the. Remember, just now I told you that there are different types. So the Buddha is a parent, right? So you see, on the morality part, to, today we look at Ambalatika Rahula or the Sutta, which is when he was age seven, when when Rahula was only age seven. You know, age seven so can really, when we were seven years old, <laughs> don't know what we were capable of. <laughs> right. And then when he was a teenager, then the Buddha taught taught him meditation on the Maha Rahulovada Sutta. And then when he was age twenty, talks him the Chula Rahulovada Sutta about wisdom. Okay. All right. So the the Sutta begins with three parables. There are three parables in this: the water pot, the royal elephant, and the mirror. Which is very timely today, right? About the mirror, <laughs> which Buddha impresses on, on Rahula the importance of not lying, even in jest. You see, so this is just a summary. Yeah? The Buddha teaches regarding the three doors of action and how one should wisely attend to each before, during, and after an action is performed. Three doors means what? Body, speech, and mind. So this, so this is. I'm giving you a summary of this sutta in this slide. Yeah? So the three parables, we'll see what these three parables are. What's the royal elephant and then the mirror. And then basically all this talks about the importance of not lying. Right? Not lying. Right speech. Right? In the Eightfold Path, the Buddha talks about right speech. And he said, you don't lie even in jest, even in joke, even as, as a joke. You don't, don't, don't lie. Later we'll see what, what this means. Then Buddha teaches regarding the three doors of actions, as, as, as you know. Why are these three doors important? Because the Buddha says, karma or kamma in Pali is created when there is intention. When there is intention to do something, to say something, or to think of something, there is karma. So karma manifests in three doors. The mind door, the speech door, and the body door. You follow? And this discourse also tells you that you should re re reflect every action bef uh, through the, that you think, be in other words, before you think, you say, and you do. Think of it before you do it. Think about it when you're doing it. And think about it after you've done it. <laughs> so, very stringent, isn't it? Very stringent practice, right? right? But this is the ideal. All right? This is the ideal. So, Buddha sets very high standards. But what is important is we know what are the standards. Because if there are no standards, then how do you approximate the standards? Isn't it? Like, I mean, many of us, I think we are all still working. When you work, you, you, you'll be very happy if, the, if your boss sets certain standards or sets set certain criteria, isn't it? Then you know how, whether, you, whether they are realistic or not, that's a separate matter, right? So he sets certain targets, certain standards. Then you can approximate, you can know how to achieve it or not achieve it. So here, that's what the Buddha says, before, during, and after the deed. 
All right. Okay, now let's let's look look at the sutra itself, right? <coughs> okay. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Rajagaha. Today Rajagaha is called Rajgir yeah, in India, Rajgir, in the bamboo groove, the squirrel century. Now on that occasion the venerable Rahula was living at Ambalatika. Then when it was evening, the Blessed One rose from meditation and went to Venerable Rahula at Ambalatika. The Venerable Rahula saw the Blessed One coming in the distance and made the seat ready and set out water for washing the feet. So this is the Indian custom at that time. Probably it must be very muddy at that time. Probably they don't wear shoes at that time. So the Blessed One sat down on the seat, made ready and washed his feet. Then when Rahula paid homage to him and sat down at one side. Now what is interesting here is that you notice that the, 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 the son brought ready the, the, the water and then he washed his own feet. Right? But, so he was a very simple, very humble as, as the Buddha. But today, sometimes you, you hear, oh, in certain monasteries when the monk come, you know, people got ready the water and then they, they wash the monk's feet. <laughs> so if the monks have read this, they'll be fair, feel very embarrassed, isn't it? Because even the Buddha washes his own feet. Why should the monks ask the lay people to wash his feet? Right? So you see, many things happen after the Buddha's time. But if you look at the suttas itself, you find that the Buddha was a very simple, very humble, and you know, a very kind and wise person. He doesn't impose unnecessarily on his people. And when people said Ananda was his, what, his attendant, right? His, or some say his closest dis disciple. That's, that's not the right word to use. You mean other disciples were not close to him? The Buddha was, was, has no nepotism, no cronyism. You know? So you cannot say Ananda was his closest disciple. Because you say that, you ask, who is not so close to the Buddha? <laughs> you, you get what I mean? So we shouldn't say the, Ananda was his closest the disciple. Ananda was his attendant. Yeah, he was his, some say his favorite attendant. Then people say, oh, Buddha got favoritism. <laughs> So some words that we use, we've got to be very careful. Huh? And even that, you know, when did Ananda become the Buddha's attendant? The Buddha became enlightened when he was 29. Then he started, no, no, no. Yeah, no, 35. He started searching for the truth when he was 29. Then six years, he strived, then he became the Buddha at 35. Then he taught for 45 years. Now when did Ananda become his attendant? Huh? When Ananda is 24 years old. Hmm, interesting. I don't know what, how old Ananda was when he became an attendant. Yeah, they were about the same age, right? Uh, I, I don't really know how Ananda. Uh, the, 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 the discourse, the, the tradition says that he, Ananda became his disciple when he was 55, when the Buddha was 55. So maybe that's why the retirement age was 55 those days <laughs> <laughs> in India. Yeah, the, the, we have retirement age. So it was 55, the Buddha was, you know, at those, those years, when you are 55, is considered quite old, right? That's why people retire at 55. That's why today people retire at 65, or 60, no, no, 62. Six, well, the, the Japanese retire at 65, or 62. The, uh, the, the Americans have no retirement age. The British also no retirement age. So, <laughs> okay, so because they never grow old, huh? They only become rich, like Donald Trump. <clears throat> okay, so simile of the water in the pot. Okay. So then the Blessed One left a little water in the water vessel and asked Venerable Rahula, Rahula, do you see this little water left in the, vessel, in the water vessel? Yes. Even so little, Rahula, is the reclusive of those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. So the Buddha used the occasion of that water which he used to wash his leg and then some left over, right? And he used that as a teaching aid. Sorry, as a teaching aid for Rahula. And what was the first teaching aid? He said, do you see this little water left in the water vessel? Then, sorry, then Rahula said, yes. Then what did the Buddha say? Ah, you see? Even so, little Rahula is the reclusive of those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. So that's the first one. Huh? Then the Buddha threw away the little water that was left. He threw away the water and asked, Rahula, Rahula, do you see that the little water that was thrown away? 
Remember that, 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 that container where he used to wash his leg? So he threw away the water now. He said, yes, sir. Then he said, Rahula, even those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie have thrown away their reclusion. You know the meaning of reclusion? Um, a, a recluse, R-E-C-L-U-S-E, is like a, like a monk. Well, the, the, the word is, the Pali word is samana. Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A, samana. Or in Sanskrit, it's sramana. A samana, just a little di digression. During the Buddha's time, uh, you know there was this caste system. I think I mentioned to some of you, you got the Brahmins, you got the warriors, the Kastriyas, you got the merchants, <coughs> and you got the, you know, the, the slaves or, or whatever you want to call them, the, the lowest end. But at the same time, there was a, a movement of, of, uh, of spiritual seekers, ascetics. All right? they, 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 they leave home. In a way, they are not, hap not you, you can say that they, 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 are, they, are, they are not so much in line with the caste system, so they become brahmanas. They become, sorry, samanas. So they are called ascetics. So the Buddha was one of them. So, so the Buddha, even though he was born at a time when there was this caste system, but he chose to follow the movement called the Samana, S-A-M-A-N-A, -A -A, which is the ascetic movement. And he was not the only one. The, the, the other very famous one is uh, Mahavira, the Jainism, you know, the religion called Jainism. So there was a, uh, in the Pali text, his name is Niganta, Niganta Nataputta. Right? Mahavira is a title like Buddha. Mahavira means the great warrior. Mahavira. You know, Vira, the Malay word? Mahavira. So it's just a title. So Mahavira. But in history books, we, we always say in Mahavira. But actually his name is Niganta Nataputta. Right? So, so you lose even that recluse. Even you become a samana, you lose that. You tell a lie, a deliberate lie. You, you lose that. So the Buddha uses to compare. And the third one, para five. Then the Blessed One turned the water vessel upside down and asked Venerable Rahula, now, do you see this water vessel turned upside down? Then Rahula said, yes. And the Buddha says, well, those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie has turned their, their monkhood upside down. <laughs> It's like they've turned their spiritual life upside down. Okay? And finally, the para six. Then the Blessed One turned the water vessel right way up again and asked Venerable Rahula, Do you see this hollow, empty water vessel? No more water in, 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 inside. Then Rahula said, Yes. Even so, hollow and empty, Rahula, is the recluseship of those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. So these four similes. Right? You see? The four similes, remember? First, the Buddha used that, that, that water vessel which used to wash his leg. So some water left. Then he says, then he shows, he throw away some, and there's some little water left in a pot. That means he say, your spiritual life is very little, <laughs> very minor. No? You're not making, you know, you're making very minor spiritual life. Then when all the water thrown away, it's like you're throwing away all your spiritual life. All right? And when the pot is turned upside down, it's like you're practicing a spiritual life, but your spiritual life is upside down. You know, you don't know what is good, what is bad, you know, what is right, what is wrong, you know, what is skillful, what is not skillful. So everything is upside down. All right? And if the pot is empty, the spiritual life is empty and hollow. <laughs> And all this happens because you tell a deliberate lie in the text, he says, and you're not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. There are two, two, two conditions there. One is you tell a deliberate lie, and number two, you're not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. All right? Okay? So break for lunch, but just one, one more point. On this concept of lie, you can think about it. Uh, is it okay for us to tell a deliberate lie if we are ashamed of it after that? <laughs> you think about it over lunch. <laughs> Uh, or are they? Uh, you, you think about that. Don't give me the answer now. Or do you think that it is possible to tell a deliberate lie, but you know, out of some kindness, out of some skillful thoughts in your mind, you 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 said I'll tell a deliberate lie. You know. So there are two questions: <laughs> white lie, is it? So one is: is it possible to tell the the, 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 the first part? Right. So there are two here. So, right. I, I don't want your lunch to get cool. Uh, so, 
Bobby said you got you got a great lunch, so better better have have your lunch. Okay. So we will come back. We have some some discussions on that. Okay.